Ah, yes, Reapers. The immortal race of sentient starships allegedly waiting in dark space. Uh, we have dismissed that claim. In this video, I'm going to look at the ship designs that I think are best to take on each one of the three endgame crises. Due to the overwhelming supremacy of battleships, all of the designs I'm going to show off today are battleship designs. That is what you want to be using when you're coming up against the endgame crisis. I'm going to be first looking at how to deal with the Prothorian, then the Unbidden, and finally the Contingency. If you'd also like me to make a video on, on how to deal with each of the Fallen Empires, please leave a comment down below. And if you enjoy this video, please attack that like button. The first crisis we're going to look at fighting is the Prothorian Scourge. It could be pronounced Pretherin. I don't actually know exactly what the uh, developers intended here with that pronunciation. Let me know which one you think it is in the comments below, but I'm going to say Prothorian for now. So what have we got going on here? Well, Prothorian ships have a massive, massive number of weapons that completely ignore your shields and will bypass your armor. For that reason, I would recommend only running crystal plating on your ships. This is going to put your hull points up to a ludicrous number here, 7,000. The reason I wouldn't normally recommend doing this is that your Newton, you'd find that your ships will melt like butter when they come up against neutron launchers or if someone were to run something like a tachyon lance. Because Prothorian weapons are predominantly missile and fighter, you want to make sure that you have a carrier core. You're going to want to have lots of fighters, lots of strike craft to deal with the enemy missiles and fighters, as well as the Guardian point defense to deal with those incoming Scourge missiles. They will not be running any shields, so you don't need to worry about shields. That being the case, I would recommend going with Tachyon Lance, Neutron Launchers, and in your small slots if you have them, plasma cannons. This is going to give you extra armor and extra hull damage and because you're not dealing with shields you don't need to worry about it. This is going to form the mainstay of any anti-Prothorian defense. Of course that ship isn't going to quite have the same fire output as an artillery battleship and for that reason I would recommend you do still run around 50 to 70 percent of your fleets full of these artillery battleships. This is going to be the workhorse of your fleet when dealing with the Prothorian in terms of the damage output, whereas the carrier is going to be more of a defensive capacity. As usual here, I've of course gone with auxiliary fire control. I'm not an idiot. I do want to have 100% accuracy where possible. An argument could be made to switch over to the focused arc emitter here. Now, why do I not think that's the best idea? I think you should go with a tachyon lance instead because that very neatly complements your neutron launchers. If you go with a focused arc emitter, you are not helping your neutron launchers to take down that armor. The neutron launchers will actually be flustering quite a lot of the battle just taking down armor, which then means you'd probably want to swap them out for something like cloud lightning or disruptors. And honestly, that is not the best idea. Neutron launchers have a phenomenal damage output. Even on the higher difficulty levels, the armor as well as the hull will be scaled against crisis fleets. So I would still recommend going for non-bypass weapons, being the neutron launchers and the tachyon lance. What if you come up against the unbidden? Well, the unbidden have predominantly anti-armor and anti-hull weaponry, but they do not have bypass weaponry. So you want to fit as many shields as you can, uh, equivalent to your power, but then take crystal plating. It's cheaper than armor and it's going to take the, have the same defensive statistics as armor does against their weapons in the majority of cases. In terms of your offensive weapons, do not run neutron launchers here. The fact is Unbidden have only shields and hull and they have a phenomenal amount of shields. The case could be made to run Cloud Lightning and Arc Emitter, but honestly, I think it's actually less effective due to the lower damage output of both of those weapons. I'm honestly not a fan of bypass weapons against other player empires, other AI empires, or against other against the Crisis. Yes, there can be a case for using them against Fallen Empires, or later on in the game when repeatables are stacked to such a high degree, but I am only focusing at the moment, I'm not looking at really late in the game with those repeatables. So I would say go with kinetic artillery, knock down those shields, and also go with giga cannons as well. You are going to be dealing extra hull damage and extra shield damage. 
but we do have a bit of a problem. Unbidden fleets can have admirals which give a plus 20% evasion bonus. That won't be a big deal when facing their battleships, but it can be a, a problem when facing their destroyers, as their fleets tend to be made up of destroyers, cruisers, and battleships. So, what you can also run here is an unbidden carrier. Now, notice I've got no picket slots filled in here, and I would recommend you don't use them because they have no missile or fighter weapons. You want to go with your strike craft. They are going to negate the, tra the evasion of your enemy ships here, which will mean you have some good output against their uh, destroyers, as well as something like an Stormfire Auto Cannon. It's got good anti-shield damage, and it has high tracking to prevent the issue of not being able to deal damage. So again, I'd probably recommend taking about 30% of these unbidden carriers and 70% unbidden artillery. Important to note, you can actually squeeze in just a few more shields to go from a level 3 to a level 5 by having more power. This is something you could actually do on all ships if you drop down to ion thrusters. And there's finally one set of ship designs that I've not shown off, and I've not talked about what we do when we are fighting the contingency. So when we're fighting the contingency, they do have a large amount of shields and armor, absolutely. But I, again, I would not recommend going with only bypass weaponry, unless you've stacked your repeatables to a high enough level that you're going to be dealing phenomenal damage with them. Generally speaking, the, uh, the regular weapons, the neutron launchers and the giga cannons here, are going to be the perfect fit. This is basically an identical design to my original artillery battleship, with one notable exception. I've dropped down from a sentient uh, uh, combat computer here just to the regular advanced combat computer. I've done that because there is a signal given off by the contingency which causes massive, massive problems to your ships if they have the advanced autonomous AI combat computers on them. So you must make sure to downgrade to this type of computer or have taken psionic and you are going to be um, I'm going to be taking the psionic combat computer. Though usually by this point, you probably already have taken psionic in the mid game and gone for that ascension path. So you'll either be running this now because it will be the best combat computer you have, or you'll be downgrading your sentient combat computers. Of course, they do have fighters. So I would as ever recommend throwing in some carriers, probably not a full 30% here as they don't have a massive number of uh, fighters and missile weapons but they do have some, so including them in your fleets will be a good plan. I would definitely uh, recommend doing that. Of course, each crisis has a unique set of mechanics and interactions when they spawn in the galaxy. The Prothorian Scourge, they come from the galactic edge. The Unbidden shatter into our galaxy from a single location, quickly followed by some other factions, whereas the Contingency reveal themselves on four different locations throughout the galaxy. If you'd like a video on how to deal with each of the different crises from a tactical perspective, leave a comment down below as well. If you'd like to see how to build battleships to defeat regular empires, click the video on screen now.